So we've updated our Nomad for Beginners course and in that course what we've basically done is we've taught all of the exact same skills again but with the updated Nomad uh, features so all the new tools all of the new post processing all of that and also we've done things like we've, we've we've done a new sort of character as we've gone along and it's this guy here so this video today is all about that course and I'm giving away the chapter where we just have a look at how to do his hair Okay, so to make the hair, we're gonna to have to literally start with a single hair. Um, and it does feel a bit extreme at first, but it's it does get very quickly because obviously we, we start with one, then we duplicate, etc., etc., etc. So best best way to start this is to take a plane and we'll move this out um, so that we can see it and bring it out to the front. We'll actually hit solo down here at the bottom and that means we can see it and actually I'll rotate it to the side as well. So you've got a normal plane and we'll put wireframe on and you can see it's way, way too high poly. So in our plane, under under topology on the plane, we can go in here now and we can say, turn off this button, which is same size. It means we can change the sizes on both dimensions and we'll bring it down because we're gonna make a hair that comes along left and right. And then we're gonna go in we're going to change those parameters a little bit. So you've got you've got your co uh, constant density there, or you can have both densities. So what I like to do is just uh, I do three, and and then it doesn't really matter that way. But keep it as low as you dare, and then you've got a plane something like that. Three is about right, so it gives you a plane something like that. So we now validate that, and then if we use the move tool, uh, it's quite a small brush. A uh, small size like that. See how it coloured it at the end? Tap to undo. That's because I left this on. Paint enabled. Turn that off and we'll just pull it like that. So what I'm going to do now is make sure symmetry is off. And then just pull it along and try and tighten it down like this. It doesn't matter if it stretches in the middle like this. Because what we're going to do as soon as we've done this bit is we're going to come with a larger brush. And we're just going to smooth it back. And what you'll find is that just smooths it to a point. So this is this is where it becomes your hair. And this is literally, remember, one strand of hair. So we'll leave it quite a, a bit bigger at the bottom, like so this end. And we'll leave it going to a taper like that, but not all the way to nothing, because we want it a little bit stylized. Come to paint. And we'll do, we've done a, a blue hair solution for most of this character. So dark paint to start. So black, whatever you whatever you want, and put a bit of... Uh, roughness uh, into it as well or make it a bit more glossy uh, don't do any metalness you don't want it to look metal uh, and you can actually flood it flood fill it all and we'll go to a lighter blue and on paint low intensity and then just start painting in the middle so it brightens it up remember these are uh, single-sided polygons so the back is actually a color so that's that 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 color um, you, can, you can just leave that as it is. If it is a strange colour, then in the settings you can change that. But we don't need to look at that just now. And then lighter on the tip. So we'll go a bit like a streak of white towards the end of the tip. So if we look at it with wireframe off, that's your hair. That's a single hair done and dusted. And if we now just use the move tool and we can just bring that up and down however we need. So let's just say... Just bring it quite large and we'll just angle it up like this give it a little bit of a kink at the end like so and that's hair number one done so you would think now that that's you know obviously it's gonna it's gonna take ages to do a whole head of hair but a great way of doing this is just name it now as hair or hair strand would do it click ok and then duplicate that oops I <laughs> deleted it duplicate that and then use, um, I'll keep this open like this, use rotate, and we'll rotate it around a little bit. And if it's too fat, or you think it's too fat, move it down like so. And we're making one clump here now, so we'll move that down like so. And we'll use move, and we'll move that one a little bit now. And we're, going, we're trying to get some variation in it now. And you will be amazed how quick this, this does go once you start, once you start getting um the whole process going bring it along 
if it, if it looks fractured ever, hold smooth and just give it a little bit of a smooth along the edge. And it just tightens it down. And that first one that we did, maybe that was a bit too jaggedy. So we'll do that as well. And then we can, now you can copy this and save one off on one side if you want. So you could say duplicate. And then if we come down to gizmo and we just use that over there, it just keeps it out of the way. So you can even move that to the top. So you know it's out of the way because these two now we're going to duplicate. Uh, sorry, we're going to uh, select them both with the little arrow and we'll do a simple merge, then duplicate them. So again, back to our gizmo, move, move them along. Oh, did it wrong there, didn't I? I? I've accidentally added in the other one because I left it selected. So that's a good point to, to be careful of. So we just want this one and this one. Simple merge, duplicate, and we'll rotate that around a little bit. And then we'll use move on it. I'll bring it out this way now. Having symmetry on doesn't help us. So, so we don't need that. And then once you've got a bit of variance in that, select two of them and then simple merge them duplicate again and then uh, just rotate it a bit and again you're just looking for some simple variance here so with a combination of you know duplicate and move you generally can get like a, we're, we're after one big clump here so when we're, we're not after doing um we, we're not trying to do um uh, individuals you know kind of hairstyles individuals you know two and three pieces of hair what we're trying to do is get a really nice clump effect and in a moment it, it it'll start coming coming together um so zoom out a little bit and you can see already it's getting there simple merge them duplicate and we'll do it a couple of times now so that we can start moving these around um like so Go back to that previous one. We'll move that out that way a bit. Like so. Obviously, we don't want solo on now. Smooth if you feel like you need it. Scale it a little bit if you're feeling either any which way that you feel that you've got, you've got an issue. So if you want a little bit more out this side, maybe even a bit of a turn, that's fine. This one, push it out this side. And there we go, we've got a nice little clump going on already. So we'll bring all of them together. Just do a simple merge. All of this is simple merge. We're not going to be using any kind of voxel re remesh of, of, of any kind here. So bring this up, down. Again, just trying to get some variance in it. And that's how you start the clumping. And that's how that's that's how you would get this to start looking um, like like a you know big group of hair um i've masked it there by mistake and um, so what we have to do now is add clumps together so we'll do a little bit more and we'll scale we'll add, duplicate again scale this one down this is pretty much how i do feathers so i've done quite a few videos of how we do that you know that kind of thing um and it's very different than when we've got a, a solution in other programs where we've got um, like Blender and Cinema 4D, where we've got dedicated fur and feather and, you know, and hair simulation software. You just don't have that here. So obviously you're, what you're trying to do is, uh, is you know, this, this, this is our best solution until we get another um, way to do this. Um, so it's, it is a compromise. But it's good to know it and it does and it can look good you know if you do it if you do it well and you groom it well enough um you, you know you can start making this look like a like a decent enough hair system certainly for stylized work so let's turn everything back on so we can see what we've got so let's um first of all we'll leave that one hidden but we'll take this one 
and we'll start scaling it now. So bring it in here and we'll make this one, uh, we'll, we'll do a few now. So we'll, we'll put one at the front here and angle it forward. Now I've left the geometry hair that we built earlier in there um, simply because it's, it's a good way to line everything up and to, and to see you know, where we want this hair. Um, just duplicate that one and then start angling it backwards from here and bringing it up or even extending it up if needed because your hair needs to lie flat going backwards. Um, and then there. And don't worry too much about the poly count at this point because it, it, you know, it's not going to get ridiculously high as long as we don't voxel remesh it or anything like that. Um, so say, for example, you were happy with those. You could do a lot more, but I want to get this to a point where I just show you how to do it. I've clumped all of them together now. Move that one to the side and move the whole group over like that. Make it shorter. It's kind of got a bit of a Mohican there. Um, and bring it down at the front and down like so. And don't forget, you could also just do a, a, a flip. So we've got the in, 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 up here in symmetry. Um, we've got world center on, and we um, uh, we just use left to right flip, and then we've got that from from both sides, and you could merge all of them, and then just use the move tool on them without symmetry. Make sure you know symmetry is going to cause you problems with you know you you don't want this to look symmetrical at all, and then we can bring that back if it's looking too much. As I said, smooth it down. You see how it tightens the hairs down, and do this side, smooth it down. And then this side here. And that is pretty much how we do hair. I don't want to labor on anymore because everything that I, that you need to know is, is in what I've already taught you there. There's a couple of tricks. So you, you can have it in place and duplicate it there and, and then use the move tool. And what that does is it puts, it puts hair in exactly the same place, but just makes it a little bit thicker if you see what if you see what I mean because it's just thickening up what's already there and then you just move one of one or the other a slight bit and that gives you enough um you know we've got this hair here underneath the geometry hair underneath could actually be moved a bit now so we could actually shrink that down a bit because because it's being replaced by real hair um, and as you can see there, you can you can almost groom it uh, as you would with a with a full CG kind of um, hair. And now move the light a little bit, and you'll see how the light falls on the hair that you've done. And if you're not happy with it at that point, what you can do is you can start well merge it together first of all. Simple merge. Go back to paint. Now I use one of these alphas. It doesn't really matter. Just something that's breaking up the the, the colours. Um, and let's say we let's do white, uh, quite light intensity. Not how big of a brush do we want? Let's have a look. That's, that's about right there. And then have a think about what you want. So if we wanted to do stripe from the Gremlins, for example, we can do that and we cover him. You know, you you can actually paint on all of that geometry while it's in there. If you wanted him to go, you know, bring bring him to a, a much younger more vibrant character that's getting jet black hair so he's just had it dyed or you can do whatever you want you can go absolutely crazy and go bright reds and you can paint it as you would anything else so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run a time lapse and it would be how we then fill an entire head and do things like the eyebrows and the beard but it's exactly the same process so all you're doing is you're building the geometry giving it a little bit of color and then merging it together and it, you know that's only taken 10 minutes so it's it's not a, a huge investment of time um if you were to you know if you to keep doing that and extend it around the back and extend it around the sides you'd very quickly have a full character like this so let's take a look at the next bit in time lapse um so we've got exactly the same clumping um we're just duplicating it moving it tweaking it rotating it 
And you notice with this version, I did this about four different times just to, to, to try different variations of it. Um, and I've got thicker hair in, in a lot of this one because I wanted it a bit more stylized. So I'm just placing it along, um, uh, going backwards and thinking about how hair flows and how clumps of hair would flow. So I'm keeping my groups um, a little bit separate. So I'm making a new group. Uh, uh, merging that together and then that group is the one that I carry on instead of merging the whole thing and you can see there on the left I've got quite a few um, layers now or, or, or different uh, items in the scene because I'm not merging them all in one go now the green around it I find quite useful because it's the it's just the outline button um, and I use this all the time in 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 my my training and basically you'll have seen me use this um, quite a lot uh, and it just allows me to know clearly simply what particular model um, or, what, or which part of the model I'm on so if you don't like that just turn it off it's not it's not essential I, I think it's, it's it really does help while you're working like this with lots of individual little parts um, so they're down the sideburns, same chunk of hair, just moving it around, move it, smooth it, rotate it, you know, tweak it like that. And you can get, you'd probably get 90% of what you want without making a single other hair strand. Now, if you think about it, we've only made one hair. So if you can do this with one hair, what could you do if you took your time and you made different lengths of hair, different thicknesses? Um, and then, you, you know, we're also moving this as a clump. So you can move them as individual hairs as well if you if you turn off um, just connected topology. So there you go, that's that head finished completely. Um, I didn't do the back on this particular one because I just wanted to render it from the front, but, but you know, we try it with, with uh, going around the whole head, do a beard, do a moustache, the same process is, is used for, for anything. So I, I tried it on quite a few different characters and, and, and creatures after this because obviously it's hair, but it could also be fur. Now I tried it here on this character with um, the beard and this hair is a lot finer. So I went a lot thinner and a lot, a lot really fine across the whole, you know, the whole beard and the whole sideboard bit, sideburns bit. Um, and, and it looks quite effective. So the lighting is crucial. Uh, get your lighting right and that will get you most of the way. Our Nomad for Beginners course has been updated today. So there's an extra five hours of content and it's free to anyone who's already bought the course. Uh, if you're new to it and you've never done this before, it means you've got quite an extensive course library in there for the one price. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us get in front of other artists who may like this kind of content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Have a great week, everyone.